Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bennett. Welcome back. We're going to start a section. This is going to be a really short chapter on balancing chemical equations. And chemical equations in general is like we're just taking a tiny, tiny slice, look at big principles. So if you've been with us for a while, you know that we take subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons on the outside, and they come together to form one of the 118 different atoms on our periodic table. Then we can take those atoms and combine them in specific ways to make these things we call compounds and molecules. Some are ionic with positives and negatives. Others are um, not ionic. They're called covalent. They overlap. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of compounds that we can describe um, based on data. We have their chemical and their physical properties. And now we're looking at if we take compounds and start putting them together, what starts to happen? And it starts with these things called chemical equations. And all equations must follow a law called the conservation of matter. So whatever goes into your equation, whatever goes into a reaction must come come out somewhere. It has to be accounted for. You cannot change the quantity, the amount, or the type of atoms in that compound. Um, the compounds always stay the same. I can change the quantity of the compound, so I can take multiples of things, but I cannot change the compound itself. And so to change the numbers right, of atoms, if I need more, let's say, we add coefficients. So this is just like in math class. If you have x plus x, right? We can combine this, we can simplify the term into 2x. So compounds work the same. So we have compound A, still compound A, we can combine them into compound 2A. So they all stay the same and we just change the amounts of stuff that we need. So we have an unbalanced equation here. It is unbalanced. Always assume equations are unbalanced. So we're going to balance it with whole numbers so it follows the law of conservation of matter. And I know it's unbalanced because I have two nitrogens on the left in my reactants but only one in my product. I've destroyed a nitrogen. I can't do that. It breaks the laws of the universe, right? Um, and also I've got two hydrogens in my reactants and only one, or I'm sorry, three hydrogens in my products. I've made one from something else. You can't do that. Hydrogen has to come from somewhere. So to balance these equations, let's spread this out. So we're gonna have an N2 plus H2 gives us NH3. So we are gonna have some quantities of N2, H2, and NH3 ammonia. This is the same stuff you clean your house with. So we're gonna make a list. So on your arrow, I'm gonna do this in blue, I would like you to draw a line. And on the left side of the line, we're gonna have our reactants. So we have nitrogen and hydrogen. On the right side of the line, you should have the same atoms. And I'll do these ones in red. We have nitrogen and hydrogen. And quantities of those atoms. On the my reactants, I have two nitrogens, and on, I have two hydrogens. And in the products, I have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. That should not be another H, that should be a two. So let's, sorry, back that up. Okay, so two and two. Just go one atom at a time. I have two nitrogens here and only one there. So to get extra nitrogens, I cannot just come in. I cannot add a little two in here because that would be changing the quantity in the compound, right? I can't do that. So in order to get more nitrogen, I need to put a number two. I need to say I need more than one of these things. I need two of them. That changes my nitrogens. I don't have one anymore. Now I've got two nitrogens. This also applies to my hydrogen. I don't have three anymore. Now I have six total. So we're looking at two molecules of ammonia, NH3, giving me these quantities of atoms. Now compare back to the left side. In my reactants, I have two nitrogens. That's good, check mark. My hydrogen, I've got two on the reactants and six in the products. I cannot change this to an H6, that's not allowed. But what I can do is I can say, well, I want three H2 molecules, giving me a total of six hydrogen atoms in my reaction. And now we have a balanced chemical equation. Two nitrogens go in as N2, they come out, one in one of the NH3s, the other in the other. Six hydrogens go in, three molecules of H2, those get ripped apart, three of them go one way with one nitrogen, three go the other way with the other nitrogen. So we are balancing the amounts of stuff on the left and the right. And I've used these words a couple times, Compounds on the left-hand side of your equation are called reactants. That's what goes into the equation. And compounds on the right are called products. What comes out of the reaction. Now, a couple tips on reading the formulas. This is review. Small numbers, like this little two, it applies only, here, let me use a different color just so we can see it. It applies only, very dramatic, to the element immediately to its left. So in this compound, there is one iron, and two chlorines. 
okay? When you've got a larger compound like this, right? So I've got a number here, a number here, so this four goes only to the oxygen, and then in parentheses, just like in math, this is a set of atoms, they go together. And so the two on the outside here goes to everything on the inside. So I've got two to that and two to this. It's a distribution of PO4s. I have two of those PO4 groups. So if I'm counting my atoms, Fe, iron, I have three of them. I also have phosphorus here. And if I have two on the outside, I have two groups of PO4s. That means I have two phosphorus. And my oxygen, one group of PO4 has four oxygens. So two groups means I have eight oxygens. So you really got to make sure you know how to count, right? This is a new thing. We haven't really looked at this. Make sure you know how to count your atoms because if you can't count your atoms, you can't balance your equations. A couple critical thinking questions here on the bottom talking about balancing what's going to be wrong. Why do we balance with whole numbers? What does that mean? And if you're in class with me, you've got a backside of this paper. Check out. There's a whole list there you can balance. If you're not, you can grab a copy of the handout on the website, bennettscience.co. Thanks for watching. Leave comments if you have questions.